So in this video, we're going to give you an example of how ranked choice voting works. So let's pretend for a moment that in your high school, you have four candidates that are running for student body president. You have Alex, Brian, Cassie, and Denise. All four of them are up for the election. All four of them make um, good points and promises for what you want. And your school is using ranked choice voting to allow you to rank your favorite choices. So let's say you rank them as follows, with Cassie being your first choice, Brian being your second choice, Denise being your third choice, and Alex being your fourth choice. And the results come in. The results are Alex has 39% of the vote of the student body, assuming everybody votes. That Denise has 27% of the vote, Brian has 22% of the vote, and Cassie has 12% of the vote. Well, none of them received 50% of the overall vote, so there is not a majority winner. That means, based off of the way ranked choice voting works, it now goes into rounds. In each round, the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated. So Cassie, only receiving 12% of the vote, will be the first one eliminated from the entire process. Since you voted for Cassie first, that doesn't mean your vote is now useless. Instead, when your top choice candidate is eliminated, your vote now goes on to the next highest ranked candidate. So for the student body race here, your vote goes from Cassie to Brian in our example. So Brian now receives your vote for the next round. And the new numbers turn into this. With Denise now at 31% of the votes, Brian at 24% of the vote, and Alex pulling away at 45% of the vote. So Brian will be the next one eliminated because there's still not a majority, and now Brian, with the lowest number, is removed from the vote. But the same process happens. So now it goes to the next ranked choice on your list. In this case, it would be Denise. So if your top choice candidate is eliminated, as always, your vote goes to the next highest ranked candidate on your ballot. So now your vote goes to Denise while other votes go to Alex. And whoever out of the two candidates that are left has a majority wins. So let's say Denise pulls away with 54% of the vote at the end of the day, whereas Alex receives 46% percent of the vote. So congratulations to Denise, you win the election, you are now student body president. That's how ranked choice voting works. Remember the golden rules here. You will always have one active vote. Five votes do not get counted, only one vote does. Whichever vote you have that gets counted will be the one that is used for the final tally. And the only way that other candidates that you've ranked for your voting are involved in this process is when your top choice candidates are eliminated because they did not receive enough votes. So that is the basics on how ranked choice voting works. Again, this is a process that can not only just be applied for things like student government, but we are seeing it now applied in actual elections, such as the upcoming primaries for the mayor's race, as well as city council seats for New York City. So for all of you who are now of voting age, be aware and be ready to get involved in this process with ranked choice voting. I want to thank you so much for listening to us today. Have a good day.